Afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's very late in Spain. You all would like to have lunch by now, but I promise to keep it short and sweet. So anyway, I think you all have seen the video. We started the journey when I took over the club. The club at that time had many challenges with corruption and match fixing being a major problem. Before any changes, we have to realize and acknowledge our weaknesses. We have to accept it instead of being in denial. And then we have to have an urge to change, to be more professional, change the structure, and changing our club's policy. The first thing that I did to set a policy, and this policy is one that cannot be changed. We set our policy with vision and philosophy. We set a professional structure, and we put in place the right people. During this process, and to this day, I am very hands-on because I want to know everything that is going on in the club. I have a lot of sponsors that help me along the way, and I would like to thank them for their trust and belief. The project is not just about football. It's about the unifying factor, and it's very important for my state that regardless of what race or any religion, I would like to see my people unified. Football gives us the same sense of identity to tell the world about where we come from, which is the state of Johor. Being a very small state in Malaysia, we have a very rich history, and we use football also as a vehicle to promote our history and identity. The next step is to make noise by signing world-class players to promote that we would, what we are going to do, how serious we are. And at that time, I had the choice of whether I wanted to invest on a foundation of youth development or invest in quick success. So far, I believe that visiting all the top clubs have really helped me a lot here and change my perspective so that I can now use to benefit football in my country. JDT has successfully changed the face of Malaysian football. We have been progressing very fast in a short period of time. We have won seven titles in the last three and a half years. We have the best facilities in the country or even in Southeast Asia. And now we are concentrating a lot on our youth development. Education is a big part of our club. We are not only forming a relationship with some of the top clubs in Europe to improve our football development, but also to focus on educating the youth. Our staff at JDT is very multiracial. Our coaches and technical staff come from different parts of the world, Argentina, Spain, Mexico, Croatia, Germany, and Australia. We believe this is a good approach because football is constantly evolving and we can learn a lot from what's happening in different football environments. Even though at the moment we have our coaching position occupied by foreigners, everyone is working towards upskilling the local coaches in my state so that one day we will be able to have local coaches in the key technical position in the club. We have started this process with our coaches spending time recently on educational coaching program attachment with academies of Valencia and Sapporo in Japan. I hope that our clubs in Southeast Asia can also learn as much as they can from Europe or other top clubs around the world from South America or even Southeast Asia and Asia. I hope that clubs in my country will learn how to utilize our financial resources and not to overspend. People in Southeast Asia should realize how important and powerful football is. It's the most popular spot in the world where you can see young kids playing on the streets and people who love to watch and support football, whether they are kids or elderly people, regardless of race, religion, and that's the power of football. It unifies people. It is a sport that speaks one language. Therefore, this is, my, this is why I involve myself in football industry, because I can see it being bigger than just a game. It is not just a game. It's a very powerful tool that can be used when implementing educational programs, teaching people respect, respecting other cultures, respecting one another from different parts of the world. 
TV rights are a big problem in my country. In other successful football countries in Europe, TV funding is, back, is the backbone of financial backing at a football club. Whereas in Malaysia, we really have to look into it to improve that so that we can improve TV rights for all the participating team in the country. Big companies should spend more on promoting football in Malaysia and Southeast Asia. When people ask me about my vision on how improving football in my country, I say to fight for improving TV rights for every club as a priority. To participate in the league, it should be compulsory for every team to have a youth development project. And obviously to improve the football facilities. These are the first three things I really encourage. We cannot allow our egos to get in the way in Southeast Asia. We can't think that we know everything because we don't. We lack a lot of knowledge when it comes to football, and that's the reason why I'm here. I don't mind putting myself down to learn as much as I can from successful people, and hopefully I can contribute this knowledge for my club and football in my country. I would like to say thank you once again. I would like to thank my family, my wife, my team of people who have been always been supporting me. I would also like to thank all our many sponsorship back home. One person I would like to especially thank in particular is Mr. Peter Lim, the owner of Valencia, for all the advice, guidance and support he has given me along the way. Last but not least, I would like to thank all of you for giving me the chance and privilege here to speak at the World Football Summit. It has been a pleasure and a great honour for me to share as much as I can in this beautiful football industry of ours. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.